This is section 2.1, basic functions and their graphs. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. We will indicate a set with a curly bracket, and then there will be ordered pairs inside there. The set of all first components x is called the domain. The set of all second components y is called the range. Okay, so the figure 2.1, we have the highest paid TV celebrities between 2010 and 2011. And I hope that you recognize some of these people here. And so in example one, they want you to find the domain and range of this relation. And so we went ahead and did the order pairs here. We said Oprah Winfrey make 315 million, Cal make 80 million, McGraw 80 million, DeGeneres 55 million, and Seacrest 51 million. Each person is an order pair. And so now they want you to find the domain. So the domain can be a set of all x components. So we're going to do all the x values. We got Winfrey, we have Cal, we have McGraw. DeGeneres, is that right? DeGeneres, and Seacrest. And right here, this is our relation right here. Okay. The, the range would be all the y components, or the set of all y components. Okay, second components, so we go ahead and look at three. 115, again, 315 represents millions. We have 80. And notice how we have 80 again. We don't need to write that down twice. We just write down once. 55 and 51. Those are all the set of all second components, the y value. We always want to think of the domain as the input and range as the output. Um, I know I have some of y'all that are um, IT people or computer people, and I think of input, I think of something that we input into the computer, and the computer will output something. You input something, and you out get an output. So um, let's think of, let's look at table 2.1, top U.S. last names, and um, Smith, Johnson, William, Brown, Jones, they're all the top U.S. last names, and this is the percentage of all names that they, that they have Smith as the last name, so 1.006% of all names have Smith as last name. So we think of it like an input um, in the computer. And domain is your input. If I were to input in the computer Smith, I would get an output for the range. And if I, again, if I put Smith in the computer and I um, Ask for how many Smiths are there in the United States, um, with a lot, or how many people in the U.S. have last name of Smith, the computer would give me an output, and it would say 1.006%. Okay, the input output. If I inputted the name Johnson and asked the computer how many people in the U.S. have last name of Johnson, they would say, or the computer would say, 0.810%. And the last name of William, the input that in the computer, the output would be 0.699%. If I put input brown, get an output of 0.621%. And then I input the name Jones, and I get the output of 0.621%, 6 and that's the same output, so I go ahead and put the arrow to that same output right there. So both Brown and Jones, you input both Brown and Jones, you get the same output of 0.621%. Okay. When each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range, then we have a function. And that's what this whole chapter is going to be covering for the most part, function. So I like to do um, this example here because it helps students really um, understand what I mean by function. So let's say we have our population of our school, JCTC, and we talk about birthdays. So on the right hand or on the left hand side here, I'm going to have JCTC's population, JCTC's population. 
And you know, we have a lot of students here, so I can't really write down everybody's name in here, but think about this in general. We have everybody in our class, we have um, the teacher, we have the faculty and staff, and so on. So if I were to input um, names, let's just make up some names. Let's say I put in the name John S, and I have Daisy L, and I have uh, Miss Chingaris. Okay, and I have, let's say we can one person, let's say Bob, and then Kelly, and we'll just give them the last name, W and Z. Okay, and again, there's more people, of course. We're just trying to represent JCTV population. And then here we're going to look at birthdays. So let's say um, John has a birthday and it is January 2nd. Okay? When I input John S's name in the computer, it's only going to shoot out one birthday. John S should only have one birthday. Daisy L should only have one birthday. Let's say her birthday is in November. Let's say it's November 10th. My birthday is January 18th. And Bob, let's say Bob, um, I put Bob's name in there, and his birthday is June 10th. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is that no matter what input into the computer, the output is only going to be one thing. John S. is only going to have one birthday. Okay. Now, let's look at the other way around. Let's say I look at birthdays first and input birthday. And let's go ahead and look at um, January 18th. I'm do random days. August 10th, June 19th, May 24th, etc. If I were to and look at JCT population, JCTC population. If I were to input in the computer January 18th, you're gonna shoot out my birthday. But do you think I'm the only person that would have that birthday, January 18th, in the whole population of the school? Probably not. There's probably going to be another person. Let's call him um, David. And then we have someone named James. And we have someone named Joey. And what I'm trying to emphasize is if I input January 18th, I'm going to get a lot of output. A lot of people will have the birthday January 18th. So when we look at the definition of function, the definition is when each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range. Here's my domain here, John S. I only have one member of the range or one birthday for John. Daisy, one birthday for Daisy. Ms. Chingaris, one birthday for Ms. Chingaris. This right here is going to be a function because each member of the domain only gives me one output. Every name will only have one birthday. Now this right here will not be a function because if I input January 18th in the computer, what will come back out with me will be more than one output. Here I have me and at least several other people, especially if you look at the population of our school, there are going to be more um, outputs in this case. This is not a function. Okay. So whenever I ask students, you know, is this a function or not, I always think about the birthday situation. And if you input someone's name in, you should get one birthday out, that's going to be a function. You input a date or a birthday in, you're gonna get a lot of people back out, and that would not be a function. Okay, let's look at example two. I'm not gonna draw this out every time. Some people will, but it's not really the best use of our time. We're gonna look at the idea of definition, of the definition of function. So example two, determine whether a relation is a function. Determine whether each relation is a function. So here I have ordered pairs: one, six, two, six, three, eight, and four, nine. We're gonna look at each input. Here I input one. And when I put 1 in, the only output I get is 6. There's no other 1 for x. Okay. When I input 2, the only output I get is 6. There's no other output for number 2 in the x value. 3, the only output is 8. And 4, the only output is 9. This would be a function. In part b, when I input 6, I get 1. But notice how in the second uh, order pair, I input 6 and I get 2. So what you're really seeing there is you're seeing this idea here. 6 goes to 1, but 6 also goes to 2. Okay, there's two outputs. Once you have more than one output, then you no, no longer have a function, so not a function. So again, let's look back to the definition here. When each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range.
So that's one way of looking at it. If you look at each x value, you should only get one y value back out. If you get more than one y value back out for that x, then you don't have a function. Functions are usually given in terms of equation rather than ordered pairs. So most times we don't feel ordered pairs. The following is the equation that models the percentage of first year college women claiming no religious affiliation. Okay. Y represents the percentage of first year college students. And the College of Women, actually, claiming no religion. And X represents the number of years after 1970. Because I'm giving you all this information here. Well, I want to look at this equation here. We're going to look at x. x is called the independent variable. What that means is if we um, choose a value for x, we can input anything we want for x. We could say um, five years after 1970. We could say six years after 1970. We could do ten years after 1970. We could do a million years after 1970. We can input anything we want for x. Let me think of that our input. Y is the dependent variable. Because it depends on what the value of x is. So once you put in this value for x here and here, you'll automatically get a y value. So it depends on what x is. Okay? Then we call this the output. Okay. Some equations are functions and some are not. Okay? So let's look at this equation here. Or determine whether an equation represents a function. Um, or determine whether each equation defines y the function of x. Let's look at this right here. If you try to determine whether an equation um, defines y the function of x, you always want to just solve for y. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. So I get y equals negative x squared plus 4. Okay. When I input a value for x, do I get one value for y? So let's say I've input 1 and for x. I put 1 in here, this gives me 1 squared, which is 1. Take the negative of that, and I get negative 1 plus 4, which would be 3. I just get the value of 3. I only get 3 out. It's the only thing I get. If I input uh, 2 here, if I put 2 here, that gives me 2 squared, which is 4. Negative that would be negative 4. Plus 4 would be 0. I only get one output. So it looks like each input. gives one output. So this is a function. Okay, part B, if I want to determine whether this equation defines y the function of x, I'm going to get some room here, I did a different color. I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. I get y squared equals 4 minus x squared, or you could do negative x squared plus 4. Now I'm going to use the square root property. So I get y equal plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. So I use the square root property. Okay. So now let's look at input. If I input, let's say, the value of 1 in here. I put 1 in here, I get 4 minus 1 squared, or 4 minus 1, which is 3. So I get plus or minus the square root of 3. So I input 1 in here, I get 3 here, but under the radical 3, and I have plus or minus. So y equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Do you see how I got two outputs? 1 basically gave me the output of positive square root of 3 and one gave me the output of negative square root of 3. That's what basically is saying. So at that point, once I discovered that one, the input, 
gave me two outputs.